Classical Physics, Chapter 1, Section 2. We talk about point mass. This is a very important concept in order to use Newton's mechanics. The point is doesn't have any size, but it has a mass. So it's not physically possible object. It's a kind of ideal object. No size, just a single point, but has a mass. Okay. Why this is so important? The when you have some uh, object. So when you apply the force, there is an ambiguity. Which point of this physical object do you give a force here or here? So how do you deal with this? this uh, for example, the the pool has a cue ball and hitting here, here, it all makes difference. Okay, you same F the force and also when you say uh, acceleration the the potato flying around spinning around like that so what is acceleration okay so this physical figures make a, a problem complicated and we deal with this as a rigid material and elastic material later after we master how to use Newton's equation on point mass okay so that's why we have to uh, learn um, the point mass first so then what how do you get the point mass for this kind of object okay the point mass of the object is going to be center of gravity and I tell you the reason why center of gravity the when you push this object and say center of gravity is here if force is applied to the center of gravity then this object make a parallel motion if force is off the center of gravity then this will have a parallel and rotational motion okay so force is used for both parallel and the rotational and the rotational uh, mechanics a little bit more complex but uh, we will get Newton's F equals MA equivalent for the rotational motion okay which is a torque equals moment angular acceleration so the any object in 3D will have a parallel motion which has a 3D, 3 degree of freedom. Plus, it can rotate X direction, Y direction, and Z direction. So, there are 3 degree of freedom in rotational uh, motion. So, in the beginning, we talk about only parallel motion. The parallel motion is caused by applying a force to a center of gravity. Okay? And how do we calculate it of center of gravity? Center of gravity, say arbitrary origin of the coordinate here, x, y, z, right? And this object material is pointed by capital R and arbitrary location is the lowercase r. The distance uh, say this 
capital R is pointing point uh, center of material uh, center of gravity center of gravity to the material dv the distance is going to be d okay so in order to um, suppose this gravity is acting on this material this there is a density this is the volume and the distance d is going to be the arm right okay so this arm if the this this is actually torque and you integrate within this material this is the entire torque and this torque is going to be zero means there's no rotation and that's a condition to find out r so we have to solve this equation now if you separate r this one r is constant so what's happened is equals uh, dv so this part the density you integrate by volume it's a total weight m right so r beta which is a location of the center of gravity is going to be given by this equation so this is the center of gravity in order to find out the center of gravity of any object like a potato right the center of gravity vector is the distance r r is location from the uh, original coordinate and density and you take an integral volume so this is actually torque torque around the origin right and divide by weight that's going to give the center of gravity so this is the equation to get the center of gravity now center of gravity can be outside of object say we have a ring object center of gravity is in the middle so it's outside of the object okay and how do you find easy way to find the, the center of gravity suppose you pin this one and place string with weight right that's gonna define vertical line and you pin this one so this material swing around and the settle then we draw the line on this material which is this line and you do that from the other point that defines this line okay so this means the torque to cause this rotation they are balanced that means t1 uh, t2 equals zero and you do the same thing here right so it's balanced again so intersection is center of gravity because this define that the the balanced torque okay so this is what what we can do if it's a 3d material instead of a line we have to define the plane and as you know two plane is going to define the line here 
so you need one more 3d need a three point to determine the center of gravity okay uh, um, so spelling here rotational motion and the power of motion the center of gravity if we use center of gravity as a point mass then we don't have to worry about rotational motion everything's move everything has a parallel motion so if you have this odd shape stuff in the center of gravity you give F then it's just move so we already have shown how to calculate the center of gravity mathematically and also physically okay and center of gravity is point mass so the mass is concentrated on this point it has a mass but size is zero and that's the way we handle uh, the motion of the object in the Newton's mechanics and of course we talk about how the rotational motion is in the section in the chapter of rigid uh, material and also elastic material okay but in the beginning we use a point mass which is a center of gravity now the if this is a planet or um, asteroid the gravitational force acting this way and this is a density times dv is the small material here and we integrate whole things so it's going to be this way that means the Newton's role imply that the gravitational force is a function of distance to the center of gravity okay so if if we have planet circling around how we deal with this planet it has a lot of material inside the planet well we just deal with only center of gravity with total mass this is total mass right so total mass and the center of gravity so the mechanics the model is like that you don't have to even care about the size because if we deal with this gravity force the distance it's a distance from center of mass to center of mass okay okay so in the newton the mechanics another things we need is trajectory trajectory is in a 3d space how the center of mass moves okay that's a trajectory okay so here's the example suppose 45 degree angle initial speed this is a v0 28.28 meter per second and that means initial velocity x y is a 20 meter per second and 20 meter per second now the we talk about separating the vector x and y and we can just look at the y only the y's distance equation over time this is time function right time function is initial velocity t uh, 
minus 1 over 2 gt squared because average this is the average velocity of t and t okay so velocity decrease over the time okay so what's happened to the x over time it's going to be vt t simple it's just going sideways constant speed right so we combine this together eliminate the t then we will get a c t equals x over v0 and plug in y equals g x v0 square plus x negative don't forget the negative so equals negative 1 minus g over 2 b0 square x right so this is the uh, quadratic equation going through 0 because when x, x is 0 y is 0 then it's moved like that right and this point is given by this side x equals uh, v0 square 2 over g so that's gonna be this point so this is a distance for the cannon to travel and this x y this motions trajectory okay and it's a star from here in the uh, it was here for a long time and suddenly start going there and stop here it doesn't show the time in the trajectory okay so the if you plug in the number we can calculate height right and the 40 meter 40 meter total 80 meter so the cannonball is gonna travel total 80 meters so that's a trajectory and what we're talking about when you say trajectory it's the motion no point mass point mass is the center of gravity of the material so if cannonball is like that we're talking about center of gravity is moving like that so this is center of gravity okay and that's a tra trajectory okay here let's practice the Newton's equation F equals ma that's divided into two uh, F y equals m a y and F x equals m a x now this one is m v y dt and this is the x dt and this fy is minus mg right and this there's no uh, nothing here so let's solve this first vx is going to be c and that's the initial constant right which is 20 meter per second x directions speed and this side we delete this then vy equals minus g t plus c and we set the coordinate initially zero so this is gone so 
the y equals uh, hold on this has the initial v y sorry okay so that's the equation we got here um, about this one and this guy right so we're using parameter t let's see if we can get the trajectory equation first see trajectory is like that okay then here d v y d t equals take a derivative first dx dt right equals minus g and this is the vx correct so the Uh, sorry, by, by is like that. So minus g bx, and this is by uh, t. So take a derivative again. Um, is going to give this guy so let's see this is no minus g yet um, let me do it again the this is vy vy equals f x vx okay so vy dt which is this one minus g equals so f double prime vx plus f prime vx prime and since vx is constant this part disappear right so we get trajectory double derivative of trajectory is going to be minus g vx okay so if we take in uh, integral it's going to be x square plus a x plus c and this is a constant so initial condition when x is zero y is zero so this gone so it's going to be x a minus g v x x so that's a trajectory so we can get trajectory directly um, from newton's equation we don't have to go through time t we assume trajectory here and plug into the newton's equation and eliminate the the term t okay so that's a one way to calculate the newton's equation uh, we can get trajectory uh, sometimes this is convenient when you have the speed dependent parameter in the equation okay so just keep it in mind that we can do uh, two different way we can solve this and eliminate t at the end or we can just set the uh, trajectory equation and eliminate the t then solve it then you get y equals fx trajectory okay so i hope you enjoyed this videos please uh, register and and go move on to the next section of chapter one which is energy.
and momentum.